Okay, welcome everyone to this World Food Forum Masterclass on Food Loss and Waste in collaboration with Food Cloud. Um, before we start, I'm going to introduce myself. So I'm Natalie. I'm based in Malaysia and from Malaysia. I'm a model, social media content creator, and a World Food Forum champion. I am passionate about healthy recipes and easy plant-based recipes, and I'm a big advocate on sustainable living. Um, well, my approach has changed. My approach from delivering the message has changed over the years. I think I got a notification, sorry guys. Yeah, so I think I'm trying to make um, my message a lot more approachable and mainstream because I do encourage my followers to try their best rather than to achieve perfection in the path to living a more sustainable lifestyle, just to heal the planet and to reverse climate change. So right now, I think I'm trying to get everyone from different industries, from the modeling industry, food industry, entertainment industry, nightlife to get involved in reversing climate change. And today I will be your moderator. If you have any questions, let us know in the Zoom chat and we, the facilitators will be um, available to help you guys out technically. And we'll be having a little poll for you guys to get involved, some questions for you guys to answer um and an open q a and so in the screen right now this is the agenda for today as you can see um we have an hour-long session which include um a brief presentation um uh, by fao senior enterprise and development officer rosa s roll she's here with us today um, where she'll introduce a topic of food loss and food waste and we will then move into an interactive poll for you guys to be involved and then we have a presentation from food clouds Co-founder and CEO is Salt Ward, who will take us through a journey of her social enterprise. This will be followed by um, a discussion with the presenter and an open Q and A for some and some concluding remarks. So, without further ado, this is Rosa Roll. Uh, she is the Senior Enterprise Development Officer in the Food and Nutrition Division of the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. FAO, where she leads the team of working on food loss and waste reduction. Um, her work addresses the enhancement of food system sustainability through food loss and waste reduction, with specific attention to quality management and food loss reduction. She has an extensive experience working in small island developing states and in the Asia Pacific region, having based at a regional office for Asia and a Pacific and the Pacific from 2009 to 2016. Rosa holds a master's in science and PhD degrees in food science from Ohio State University, Columbus, Ohio in the United States. So here we have Rosa Roll, take it away. Thank you very much. Um, Ryan, are you here with my slides? Okay, great. Okay, full screen please. Okay. Okay. So good afternoon, everyone. Um, first of all, I have to say I would like to commend Food, Law, Food Cloud and the World Food Forum for putting together this excellent initiative on the eve of the International Day of Awareness of Food Loss and Waste. Um, this event and the work that is being done by Food Cloud, they both align perfectly with the goals and objectives of the International Day of Awareness of Food Loss and Waste. Next slide, please. Today, we know that the world has the capacity to produce enough food so that everybody can benefit from a nutritious diet. Next slide, please. However, this is not the case in reality. We are some 811 million people go to bed hungry every night, and another 3 billion are malnourished, while at the same time, 14% of the food that is produced globally is lost in the supply chain from harvest to the wholesale market, and 17% of all food produced is wasted in retail, food services, and also mainly in households. In fact, most of this waste, as I said, highlighted, takes place at the household level. And then we have greenhouse gas emissions resulting from the rotting of food loss and waste in landfills 
that also contributes to climate change. Next slide, please. Now, all of these critical issues and concerns were considered and discussed by FAOs, the governing bodies, and who endorsed the idea of moving ahead to request an international day, to propose, I should say, an international day of awareness of food loss and waste. And then this was subsequently taken up to the United Nations General Assembly, where it was agreed that an international day of awareness of food loss and waste by the international community would contribute significantly to raising awareness of the importance of the problem and its solutions at all levels. And it would also promote global efforts and collective action toward meeting the sustainable development goal and goals, and in particular, SDG target 12.3 that seeks by 2030 to half per capita global food waste at the retail and consumer levels and reduce food losses along production and supply chains, including post-harvest losses. And on 29, on, sorry, on the 19th of December, 2019, the United Nations General Assembly designated the 29th of September as the International Day of Awareness of Food Loss and Waste. Next slide, please. So tomorrow, the 29th of September, marks the second observance of the International Day of Awareness of Food Loss and Waste. And it makes this tomorrow, we make a call to action for public and private entities and individuals each one of us as consumers to prioritize actions and move ahead to reduce food loss and waste toward restoring and building back better and resilient agri-food systems. And certainly, next slide, please. Okay, I think we, all of us have a role to play in this and we as consumers can certainly do our part in responding to this call for action, to action by applying some good practices. And here we see some examples, nine easy tips that can take us there. Take smaller portions of food so that you don't have to leave portions of your plate that on your plate that get thrown out. Use your leftovers, use a shopping list, buy ugly fruit, check the temperature of your refrigerator to make sure that it's cool enough. Practice first in, practice first in, first out for food and refrigerated items that you have stored at home. Read your date labels carefully to see what is best before or the use by. Best before dates mean that there's a quality issue so that food is still safe well beyond the lifetime if of the that is that best before date. Whereas used by, there are food safety issues and risks, and we need to be more attentive uh, to those products that have the used by date, which are generally the highly perishable products like milk and so on. Uh, another thing we can do is to waste, turn waste to compost and also donate unwanted food. The next slide, please. So how else can you contribute? Well, tomorrow you can work toward uh, informing, educating, engaging other people in discussion on the issues. But also, we would encourage you and invite you to join the hashtag Food Loss and Waste Day campaign by sharing a lot of the free material that we offer on the website of the International Day of Awareness. And at the bottom of the screen, you can see the website uh, that uh, where you can actually access some of that information. And you, we also invite you to contribute uh, anything that you have in terms of activities and initiatives um, to the, this, this special website because we publish a lot of the information on what's happening um, in different countries with different groups at different times on the website. And most importantly here in closing, next slide please. We would like to invite you all to join us at the virtual event 
which takes place tomorrow afternoon. Um, it's a global virtual event um, that will talk about the international, the importance of food loss and waste. It will be a celebration or observance of the second international day of awareness of food loss and waste. And it, I, I, I guarantee you, it promises to be a very exciting and interesting um, event. We, it involves a high level segment and then we talk about after we have a round table of an international panel uh, that we'll be talking about a lot of very interesting uh, dynamics and dimensions of what is currently happening in terms of food loss and waste and the new and emerging opportunities to address the issues at scale. So and in closing also, we, we also converge with you here because um, the, the Chair of the, uh, the WFF will also be closing and introducing the WFF. So this concludes my very brief presentation and I thank you for your attention. Over to you, Natalia. Thank you so much, Rosa, for that. Um, we do have a question actually by one of our participants asking if the presentation can be shared or viewed publicly. Absolutely, you're most welcome to uh, share it around. Yeah. Okay, maybe we'll share it via email. But it's so, so okay. exciting there's an event tomorrow. Yes. So don't forget, guys, join the hashtag FLW, is it 21? Is that the number? Hashtag FLW campaign. Hashtag FLW, FLW campaign. Day. Hashtag FLW day. Day. Campaign. So that's happening yes. tomorrow. And then we share yes. our awareness and tips about it. Yes. Um, I like the slide yeah. about all of the tips because yes. I do enjoy like a lot of the tips as well. Um, food planning and how to save um, food from going to waste and composting. Um, I've learned something recently where we are uh, um, using fruit peel and then pouring water in it to brew like a fruit tea to, um, it's, it acts as a natural fertilizer for plants. Um, I'm gonna try it out soon. So I think that should could be like another tip to prevent food loss and to, uh, yeah, to yeah. make the most out of our food. So thank you so much, Rosa. Thank you. You did mention, yeah, you did mention that you have to, um, to run, run somewhere to another yes. meeting. Yeah. Yes. So, but I'll try my best to stop by if I can. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thanks so much. Do drop bye. by again. We'll be here. Thank you. Bye. See you guys. Um. Yeah. Bye. All right. So now the fun part: the interactive poll. Um, David will be putting up the questions later, uh, and then you guys have some time, maybe 15 to 20 seconds to answer the questions. Um, David, should we start with the first question? We're gonna test a little bit on your knowledge of uh, the issues of food loss and food waste. Do you guys see the questions now? Please, uh... okay, cool. So the first question is, what percentage of anthropogenic greenhouse gas emissions is food waste responsible for? Is it A, estimates such as eight to 10% according to the UNEP Food Waste Report 2021, um, seven to 10% or six to 11%? Okay, you guys have 20 seconds before I reveal the answer. Click on your answer right now. I'm gonna put my answer. Oh, okay, so most of you answer correctly. So that's the correct answer. It is eight to 10% according to the UNEP waste report of 2021. Um, I think that's a huge number and um, because of the, I think it's a big issue now on social media where fast fashion is, um, such a big issue and really causing a lot of damage on the environment and the percentage according to the UNEP, I think it's 2020 uh, report, if I'm not mistaken, um, it says it's about 8% of GHD, uh, GHG emissions as well. All right, well, you guys are pretty smart. Okay, next question. <laughs> Do we have the next question? So globally, how much food, how much of the food produced is lost or wasted? Is it A, um, 
one out of four of the food produced of human consumption is lost or wasted globally, B, a third, one out of three, or one out of five? Putting your questions, guys, you have 15. I'll give you 15 since you guys are so smart. You have your answers. What is the question? Well, you guys are really smart. <laughs> so that is the correct answer. One out of three of the food produced for human consumption is lost or wasted globally. And yeah, that's such a big number. Uh, one out of three of the food is wasted when we can all just eat it. They're all perfectly good food. Okay, so next question. Please get it wrong this time. Okay, how many people in the world go hungry each day? Is it in 2020, it is estimated that almost 720 million people went hungry or 730 million people, or is it C, 770 million people? I doubt you guys are gonna get the correct answer. <laughs> Put in your votes, is it A, B, or C? 720 million people or 730 million people? Okay, we have the answer. Again, 770 million people, that is the correct answer. Um, if you guys want to know, that's actually more than the entire population of Europe to date. That's a massive amount of people and all of them still go, to hung go hungry. All right, so next question. This is the last question. Okay, so what is the best food waste management technique? Brackets, apart from prevention. Is it re redistribution, excuse me, redistribution, healthier or sustainable diets or support local food producers? You guys are gonna get wrong. Redistribution, healthier or sustainable diet, support local producers. So prevention is definitely a technique, but what is the other technique that we can do that is a solution at this time? Yeah, the answer is redistribution. So as I mentioned, uh, prevention is definitely on top of the hierarchy, but many scholars believe that redistribution is actually the best technique to keep food from being wasted as it deals with the twin issues of food waste and world hunger. So since we're in the topic of the twin issues of food waste and world hunger, we're now going to move in to the presentation by the co-founder and CEO of Food Cloud, Esalt Ward. So I'm going to introduce her a little bit. Um, she's very impressive. So Esalt is the co-founder, as I've said, and she launched, she and her um, co-founder, Abin, they launched Food Cloud in 2013 and established Two solutions for food redistribution connecting food businesses with surplus or excess food with local charities and community groups who can use it as part of their services. In 2017, Isolt was included on Forbes 30 under 30 social entrepreneurs European list. She also received a humanitarian award from Muhammad Ali Center in Louisville, Kentucky. And in 2018, Isolt's own co-founder, Avin, received a humanitarian award from the Irish Red Cross. And in 2020, Isolt was awarded with the Social Responsibility Award and inaugural um, UK Department of Trade European Tech Women Awards. And this year in April 2021, Isolt was awarded with the 2021 Trinity College Dublin Prestige Alumni Award. Isolt is also one young world ambassador and one time magazine's next generation leaders. 
So if this isn't impressive, I really don't know what is. Um, hi, Isolt, how are you? Welcome. Good, thanks. I'm delighted to be here. Yeah, I think we're so excited. Everyone on the chat is really um, very impressed, as I am of you. So uh, yeah, without further ado, the floor is yours. Great. I'm just going to share my screen. If you guys have any questions for Isolt later in a Q&A, you can put your questions in the Q&A and then we will answer them later. We'll do our best. Um, okay, so you can see everything okay, yeah, the slides. Yeah, um, yeah so thank you. I'm uh, delighted to have the opportunity to present um, to you all today. Um, and I'm going to bring you through um, the journey of setting up food cloud. Um, but first, here's a quick overview of what we do. So we redistribute surplus food, working with the food industry uh, to help them redistribute good quality uh, edible surplus food to nonprofit organizations and charity charities. And we do this through two solutions, our warehousing and logistics solution that we run in Ireland. And then we also have a technology platform that helps supermarkets and food businesses connect directly to local organizations. So last year in Ireland, we redistributed um, the equivalent of over 7 million meals um, to organizations across the country. And also our technology internationally supported the redistribution of, any, of over 24 million meals. This also then results in over 32,000 um, CO2 emissions being avoided by preventing that food going to waste. And since we started in 2013, almost 120 million meals equivalent have been rescued and donated to charities across Ireland and the UK and through our international partnerships. But we couldn't do all of this if it wasn't for our amazing team. So we have over 70 people working with us in Ireland and they're supported by teams of volunteers, people who work with us through community employment schemes. And this ensures that um, we continue to do what we do every day and continue to grow our impact. Um, but back to our early days. So um, some of you might recognize this, it's Trinity College in Dublin. So this is where I went to university. And I was in the third year, when I was in my third year um, studying business and economics that I first became aware of the problem of food waste. So you'll have heard this stat and we know you're all uh, well aware of your food waste stats from the polls. Um, but over 30% of food produced is lost or wasted globally. And actually the most recent research by the WWF um, shows that taking farm waste into consideration, this figure could be as high as 40%. And this is uh, very problematic when you consider that 8% of greenhouse gas emissions are a result of food waste. And that places food waste as the third largest country um, emitting uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So we started off um, by really actually just understanding that there were businesses that had perfectly good food that was going to waste and that there were charities that could really benefit from it. And this is actually a photograph of our very first donation. And it was actually in 2012 before we um, started using technology. We literally used to go and visit local nonprofits in Dublin, in Ireland, and um, bring surplus food from, in this case, it was a local's farmer, local farmer's market. And this is when we really got to test the idea and understand the benefits that the food can have. And you can see on the um, in the pictures there, this was really good quality food that was coming from a lot of local producers who also really didn't want to see this food going to waste. So we created these really uh, great partnerships between local food businesses and nonprofits. And this gave us the idea that um, we could use technology to make this uh, a lot more scalable. So being able to manage hundreds and now thousands of supermarkets and food businesses donating would need technology to help us manage the connection between the donations, um, between the businesses and the charities, and also track the impact um, that businesses are having. So we began to work with technology. But as I'm sure you're aware from all startup stories, um, when we first launched this technology in 2013, it didn't go very well. And it was going into um, 
an accelerator program in Trinity uh, just as I was graduating that we had to actually um, start again because we realized that the first trial that we launched working with cafes and bakeries and a few charities in Dublin wasn't going to work. But not to be discouraged, because as we walked into the um, into this accelerator in Trinity, this quote by Samuel Beckett was up uh, on the wall. And it's something that we still try and uh, remember today as we try new things and they don't always work out. And it's ever tried, ever failed, no matter. Try again, fail again, fail better. And I think this is particularly important as well um, as we have we have a lot to do in terms of achieving the sustainable development goals that I'm sure you're all aware of. And we'll need new innovation, we'll need bold ideas. And that means that they're not always going to work out uh, because that's part of the process of innovation. So it's important that if you're trying anything and it doesn't work out the first time, not to be discouraged, but actually to keep going and try again. And it was after doing that trial with a bakery um, and a few cafes that we realized that really we needed um, a very specific kind of food business to work with us at the beginning. And that was going to be a supermarket. And the reason was that supermarkets by their nature um, operate in a very uh, specific way every day. And they have a lot of scale. Um, and they also have a very valuable type of surplus food available that was particularly beneficial to charities. So you can even see in the um, crate of food there, there's fresh fruit and vegetables, you know, there's bakery products, there's products that charities would normally use as part of their day to day. So we began uh, when we realized this, we started approaching supermarkets in Ireland um, to see if any of them would be willing to sign up and to do a trial with us. Um, this was really difficult because we were two very recent graduates who had only done a few small trials so far and we didn't have a very good reputation or experience in the sector. But after a lot of um, supermarkets saying no, eventually we found one uh, supermarket that was willing to do the trial and that was Tesco. And Tesco at the time were Ireland's largest uh, retailer. So this was a brilliant opportunity for us to really try and make our solution work. And what's, what was amazing when we started the trial was actually we began to see more benefits than we anticipated from redistribution. So when we set out to do this, we wanted to reduce food waste, which is really important to us. And we also wanted to support local nonprofits and local charities by providing them with food. But what we were actually hearing from feedback was that this was a an amazing um, thing for the staff and the store to actually participate in. And the element of sharing food within a community started showing us these other benefits that today are some of the um, reasons why we believe that so many different companies have really started working with us and so many charities as well. So you can see there's a very happy team in Tesco um, now that they get to donate their food every day. Um, saying that this is the highlight of their day and you know some of the nicest activity that they do and then on the other side of that we um, started hearing very important and impactful impactful feedback from our charity partners and um, so when we started this um, we recognized that there were a lot of people that were facing food insecurity and we wanted to address that problem but some of the benefits that we saw in addition to addressing food insecurity was around social inclusion um, and really creating strong um, social connections uh, amongst people that are benefiting from services provided by charities and local groups. Um, we have a few stories would include um, a women's refuge where um, the people staying in the, the women in the refuge might struggle to socialize with each other because of the backgrounds that they've come from. And a lot of people having dealt with traumatic situation will make find it difficult to create connections with people again. And actually, um, the manager of the charity gave us feedback to say, you know, every twice a week, a box of surprise food comes in. And the nature of surplus is that it's surprise food. But what, what it meant was that you've got these women getting around the box of food, going through and picking out different ingredients, picking out different items and talking to each other about it, asking what they could cook. And you've got conversations starting, laughter amongst people, friendships are starting to form. 
And I think it's one of the most uh, special things about food is that any every country, every culture, food is a part of everybody's life in some way. And it doesn't matter where you're coming from or what your background is. Food has a role and everybody can share and celebrate food together because of that. So we really began to see some of the great um, benefits of food being redistributed to charities. Um, this is an image of Janice, who's a chef in Cheeverstown, a charity in Ireland that supports people with um, physical and intellectual disabilities. And food can become such an important part of their day to day. They'll serve lots of different kinds of food in the canteen now, whereas before they might have served the same meal every Monday, the same meal every Tuesday. Now, every day, there is a completely different meal on the menu based on the surplus food. And whilst it's really challenging for the chefs to manage this, they get a lot of um, excitement and a lot of conversations because of the variety of food and because of the fact that they can experiment and try different foods, something they wouldn't have been able to do normally as a charity. So you really on both sides from the businesses to the charities, you have the core benefits of reducing food waste and reducing food insecurity. But then you also see these other benefits around social inclusion, creativity um, and really creating strong connections between businesses and charities and individuals within their communities. So this is a picture of my co-founder um, um, because after we set up the technology solution in 2016, we then had an opportunity to open three hubs in Ireland and these are our three warehouses. So this was the hub when it was empty in our very early days and we were very excited about opening it up. And basically this allows us to take really large quantities of surplus food that go to waste for a variety of reasons further up the supply chain, whilst our technology solution allowed charities to go, go directly to a business. When you're dealing with food, whether it's from farm, manufacturing, distribution centers, the quantities can be far too large for one charity to manage, which means that we will bring it into our warehouse and then break it, uh, break it down into more manageable quantities so that charities can then draw down the food um, and use it as part of their services. It also means that we get access to different kinds of food so we can get large quantities of vegetables. Um, the next slide actually shows one of our colleagues in Hilton Meats. So this is a large meat factory in Ireland. Um, and there she's in there working with them to identify, you know, is there a stage within your process where there's actually food that couldn't be sold? Maybe it couldn't fit into the packet or maybe it doesn't meet the specification of retail that actually you could instead divert to Food Cloud and we could redistribute that out and um, redistribute that food out to charity. Also, we work at a farm level, so here's volunteers um, and after the harvester has taken all of the potatoes out of the ground, there is still some left in the ground that the machinery misses and this is called gleaning and we send volunteers out into the fields who can then pick up all of the potatoes from the ground that the machinery missed. It's not economically viable for the farm to do that themselves and then sell the food. But they're more than happy for us to send volunteers into the field who can then take rescue all of these perfectly good food and we can bring it out to charity. And we've also been able to do this in partnership with some of our retail partners. Um, here is a picture of the team in Lidl in Ireland going out and working with um, their carrot supplier to actually glean the carrots afterwards. So, you know, Lidl would purchase the carrots that are picked up by the machines and then we volunteers collecting the leftover carrots to redistribute it out um, to nonprofit organizations. And then sometimes we get too much of one product and we're not able to redistribute it all. Um, and this happens in around this time of year when there's lots and lots of Irish apples available. So apples grow really well in Ireland and there is a lot of apple trees um, across the country, often just in people's gardens um, and they can't eat all of the apples themselves. So we also have volunteers that collect apples across the country and because we can't redistribute all of the apples within the time that they stay fresh, we actually can send them to an apple farm where they'll turn them into apple juice for us. And this means that the food is transformed from something that only had one month shelf life into something that has a whole year shelf life and is very um, tasty as well. So we always have a high demand for the apple juice. 
and we couldn't do this if it wasn't for um the all of the volunteers that come to help us as well so i've mentioned them a few times but uh they are always worth mentioning because every day we have volunteers who come in and help in our warehouse and we also have volunteers through the gleaning as well and it's a, also a really important part of what we do because as you'll have seen from Rosa's slides, tomorrow is the International uh, Day of Food Loss and Waste. And it's really important that we continue to spread the word about food waste because it's something that we can all take action on and we can all take action to reduce our food waste. So the more volunteers, the more ambassadors, the more people we engage with, the more we can spread that message and the more impact we can have in terms of people making changes in their own lives as well. And here's a small um, overview of our international journey. So we started in Ireland with our technology solution and with our warehouse, but, our, um, but we also work and are part of a global community. So we work with Fairshare, who are the equivalent of Food Cloud in the UK, and they use our technology um, to connect supermarkets directly to community organizations across the UK. And we also have um, work, done work with the European Commission through their FLW uh, platform and also are part of a European network and a global food banking network. So you can see here that there is a national food rescue organization um, across 74 different countries um, globally. So we're actually part of a global community. And whilst not all of these organizations use technology yet, so one of our aims is also to support that community in using technology where they haven't been able to access technology themselves or where they can really see that technology could benefit the way that they work. Um, so to kind of bring it to an end, um, you know, it's by 2050, we have to feed um, an additional 2 billion people and the way that we're producing food, as I'm sure you're all aware, uh, is not a sustainable way in getting us there. There are so many practices that we need to change in terms of how we um, think about food, but across our whole system from production to consumption. And food waste definitely is one of the key actions that we can all take to transform our food system. And we can see this in the Sustainable Development Goals. I've specifically called out 12.3 that I, I'm sure you're all aware of at this stage, but that's to half food waste per capita by 2030. But there are also goals in there like number two, zero hunger by 2030. It's incredibly important that we achieve this. Um, and also number 13, climate action. We'll have heard 10% of greenhouse gas emissions are coming from food waste. So reducing food waste is a really important goal um, that will also encourage climate action. So the last thing I'll say is that, um, you know, we need to change the way that we think about food. Um, often what we hear from people when we tell them about food waste is that, you know, they didn't realize the value of the food they were throwing away in terms of the resources from land, water, energy that goes into producing that food. So it's something that we can all um, reflect on. I'm sure there'll be lots of good tips online over the next uh, over the next 24 hours with food loss and waste day tomorrow so definitely keep an eye out for all of those tips see what you can do and um, maybe see what the businesses and community organizations in your country are doing as well to tackle this problem so thank you Thank you so much, Assault, for that really inspiring um, presentation. I'm so inspired and I learned a lot from it. Um, yeah, I'm like speechless because you're very impressive and I look up to you very, very much. Um, I actually have a few questions um, to ask you and pick your brain a little bit if you're up for it. So uh, my first question is, what inspired you to start Food Cloud? Um, yeah, it's a good question. You know, I loved the, I was studying business and economics at the time. So I love the idea of being able to create a business. And then when I came across the idea of social enterprise, so, um, you know, being able to operate like a business, but actually creating a really positive social and environmental impact. Um, so that's what got me interested in social enterprise. And from there, I met my co-founder who was actually doing a more environmental science at the time. And she introduced me to the problem of food waste and the environmental impact that it was having. 
Um, so I'd always been really passionate about food in general and being able to combine social enterprise and a passion for food. Um, I just knew it was something that I'd be able to um, really commit a lot of time to. Right. So you saw a gap in the system and then you bridged it with both brains of yourself and then your partner together and then food cloud um, was born and then now you've taken over the world globally. Um, it's now a social platform. Um, I want to get on it. I want to bring this to Malaysia. I think there's nothing like this here. And I think most supermarkets would rather just throw food, to, food away because it costs time and money to just redistribute each one like themselves so they can have like a partner with them to redistribute the food. I think that would be amazing. Um, my next question is, what is the biggest challenge you've had to overcome? There's definitely been um, different challenges at different stages. I think in the very early stage, it was actually convincing people that food waste was a problem worth solving. Uh, because it was already a problem and nobody was saying anything. So when we went to supermarkets, they're like, hmm, why would we put in the time and effort to solve the problem that nobody's talking about? Um, so that was definitely a problem. Um, like Tesco were the first to come on board, but Tesco actually had a global ambition to tackle food waste. And they were the only supermarket that we came across that had this as a stated goal. Now, it, now that is no longer a challenge. Nobody is denying food waste is a problem. Nobody is denying that we need to tackle this problem and that it's a huge, um, that it has to be a huge part of our journey towards a more sustainable planet. So that bit is over. <laughs> but now we have uh, the fact that, you know, we have a lot of businesses on board. We've gotten to a certain point. And in a sense, um, it's like, you know, we've gotten the low hanging fruit. So the next stage of growth for Food Cloud is going to be more challenging because we're going to be finding them. We're going to have to find the food that we're not currently redistributing. And that food will be a little bit more challenging to redistribute. So businesses who haven't signed up yet, food, some food in businesses that they're not donating yet. Um, so, yeah, that, that'll be the next challenge. I think that would be... Do you think the pandemic really exposed the gap even more that this is a problem and uh, it has accelerated the need for people to reach out to Food Cloud? Definitely. Um, what was interesting about the pandemic is it put um, surplus and scarcity side by side in a very um, in a very serious way and very suddenly. So on one side we had restaurants closing down, but there was food that was destined for restaurants already in the supply chain. So we saw massive amounts of surplus food and people were hearing stories about all of this surplus food because restaurants and catering were closing. But then on the same side, you had people who were suddenly losing their jobs, people who couldn't leave their homes because they were high risk. Um, all across the world, there were people facing unimaginable situations of food insecurity and so suddenly. So on one side, we had all of this surplus food being created because part of the in in industry shut down. And then a lot of people who worked in the industry had lost their jobs and therefore couldn't access food at all. So we saw food redistribution organizations across the world step up uh, and increase the amount of food they were down, they were redistributing through their networks. And I think it was one of the first times, um, was well, definitely the first time since I've started working in the sector that we saw the two problems side by side so suddenly. And we saw this is a food systems problem. You know, it's it's across the food system that we need to be thinking. We can't look at these problems in small sections. We need to look at the whole food system. Um, and it's really important that we do. Yeah, I think that's really important. I think like, especially here in Malaysia, we have this thing called the white flag campaign. So people basically wave their flags outside of their house, telling and declaring that they cannot afford their basic necessities, such as food. And then you have so many different food banks that are donating money, donating food, but then still so much food still goes to waste, like in restaurants, supermarkets, and things like that. So um, yeah, it would be amazing if Malaysia had something similar to Food Cloud. So um, moving to my next question, do you think um, Food Cloud's model is replicable um, across the world? 
Yeah, definitely. Um, like it's it's not going to be easy uh, by no stretch of the imagination. But I think you know there is a there is a network of food redistribution organisations already in existence. Uh, most of them don't use or don't have access to technology. Um, so there is definitely an opportunity for those organisations to start using technology um, to increase the amount of food they're redistributing and. Just to give an example, our UK partner have been re, has been redistributing surplus food for over 20 years. They do amazing work across the UK working with food businesses, um, but they didn't use technology until they started working with us as part of that to work with um, retail, food retail and supermarkets. And within two years, they saw a 35% increase in the amount of food they were distributing through technology. So the warehousing and logistics solution is creates a lot of positive impact and rescues a lot of food. But that plus technology uh, can create a real step change in the amount of food that we're redistributing um, and getting from the food industry over to the charity sector and to community organizations. Wow. So what's next for Food Cloud? Hopefully uh, developing a rational <laughs> model to support uh, to support a global community of food banks. We have We've a lot, we still have a lot of work to do uh, in Ireland as well, but the more we uh, use our solution here, the more we use our solution with our existing international partners, um, the better it will get. And hopefully the more food banks that will be able to benefit from that solution as well. We, there's also a big benefit in having um, all of these organizations as part of a global network. You know, again, through COVID, we saw that in you know one country in Europe, you could have so, so much food going to waste. And then in another country, you have so much scarcity. And at the moment, we all connect and we share learnings and experience and information with each other. Um, but maybe at some point in the future, we'd also be able to share food more effectively um, across multiple countries. So basically world domination, <laughs> taking over the world, but in a good way, redistributing food um, throughout the world. I think there's so many, yeah, like gaps in different like countries. And um, you mentioned apples in your slide uh, yeah. about how in um, Ireland, it's the best place for apples. But in Malaysia, all of our apples usually come from, you know, uh, the Western countries and still they're expensive, but it still goes to waste a lot. Um, uh, yeah. So in Moving on to my next question, what role can youth play in transforming our food systems to reduce food waste? So definitely um, a lot of food waste happens in the home. Um, so we all have a role to play in terms of our own day to day actions and how we can reduce food waste. It's really important that we do that. Um, but then there's also so if you're waste, if you're finding innovative ways to stop wasting your own food, you can share that information with other people talking about it. You know, it's it is amazing to see them um, how the transformation from nobody's talking about food waste as a problem to now people are really starting to acknowledge it. Um, and I think we need to keep that awareness going because more and more people, everybody needs to become aware of this problem so that we can ultimately tackle it because everybody has a role in it. Um, but then also uh, encouraging businesses that you buy from as well to make sure that they are um, you know, donating their food where they can, preventing the food to, from going to waste and acting really responsibly too. So I think we've got, um, you know, there's actions you can take in your own day-to-day -day personal life. You can share those actions with friends and families. And then you can also ask the businesses that you're buying food from what they're doing. Nice. I think individuals, the voice of an individual is strong enough, but collectively as a community, we encourage others, such as say um, a business to, prevent food loss or like to take action. I think that really emphasizes um, the awareness. And also I think from um, just starting from your own home, you know, like you mentioned finding innovative ways to do it, be it composting or food planning. I personally love food planning because I hate seeing food go to waste. So I make sure I have my meals ready throughout the week before I go and get my groceries. So I think collectively, if we all do something together everyone will start doing it too and making it mainstream so yeah thank you so much for sharing um how about we get the audience involved if you guys have any questions i think we have one question uh on the q a section if you guys have any questions also please write them down so the question by gita nandini she says that how can we prevent food loss from restaurants 
Yeah, so great question. Um, definitely prevention in restaurants is really important. And I know there's some really interesting technology out there. Um, I think Winnow in Europe potentially and Lean Path is another one in the US where they allow restaurants to weigh and track the food um, using technology that um, is going to waste. And they can actually save a lot of money that way as well. Um, and then there's also um, new apps like uh, Too Good To Go. Um, I, I'm pretty sure are across most European countries now. Um, and I think Karma is another one where they allow restaurants to sell discounted uh, food at the end of the evening. So when they're trying to make sure they get rid of all of the food by the end of the day. Um, so there are two solutions that I think in addition to donating food where the food is safe to donate um, can really help with restaurants in reducing their food and also can have a commercial benefit as well at the same time, which is probably pretty important for the sector at the moment. Yeah, I think everywhere in the world should adopt that, uh, that, um, that effort, I think, because I think most restaurants just throw out their food and um, they maybe they don't plan out the produce properly and then they end up wasting the food or making too much because in for example here in Malaysia we have something called for example in the Chinese restaurant or a Malay restaurant we have this thing called chop fun or mixed rice so basically all the food is prepared and you just take whatever you want but I think now because most people don't want to go out because it's a bit too dangerous and too risky most of the food go to waste um, yeah so I think there's a lot of awareness to bring up to the restaurants and thank you uh, Gita Nandini for the question. Um, do we have any more questions available? Let me have a look. Um, one more from Oliver Camp. When it comes to food waste, what message would you want to send those gathering at COP26 in November? Yeah, at COP. Um, so it's the UN uh, event on climate. So that's in Glasgow in November. Uh, great question. Um, so I think it's really important that uh, countries, especially governments, when they're looking at introducing any policy or regulation to tackle food waste, that they think about the food waste hierarchy. So this is a hierarchy that sets out that the first action that must be taken is prevention. The second is to make sure the food is redistributed um, and feeds people. After that, it's the food is used for animal feed and then anaerobic digestion and composting. And by following that hierarchy, we're making sure that any surplus or excess food, um, we're following the best possible path to have the best environmental impact. And um, especially now, as we are hopefully at the beginning of accelerated progress towards reducing food waste and reaching the sustainable development goals, it's important that as we do that, that we um, follow the best guidance that is already out there and quite well known, but also sometimes can be forgotten. So I think the message would be is, you know, we definitely need policy. We definitely need some regulation around this. Um, but that policy and regulation should allow businesses um, to follow the food waste hierarchy and make sure that it's prevention, redistribution, animal feed, compost, and anaerobic digestion in that order. <laughs> Thank you. I hope, Oliver, um, your question is answered. That's a really good answer and question. Um, do we have any more questions? If you guys have any last minute questions, please type them down so I can read them out while Isolt is here with us. Do we have any more? No more? <laughs> do you think we can wrap it up? I think we're 10. Oh, we have one more. Anonymous, how do we address food loss in LMIC? LMIC, yeah. I'm not sure what LMIC is. Low middle income countries. Ah. Um, so the research generally shows that there's more that food waste um, can, uh, is often more of a problem at earlier in the supply chain in low and middle income countries. So, um, for example, at farm level, that there's a higher percentage of food going to waste at a farm level um, than there is in more developed economies. So some of the recommendations show that actually providing additional funding for farmers around their infrastructure, their transport, their um, storage capacity um, can really could really make a big difference in being able to reduce food loss and waste at a farm level. Um, so I think a lot of the research would 
um, show this already, but really focusing on making sure that farmers have the right equipment um, so that they aren't losing any food or that there isn't any food going to waste as a result of not having enough storage um, or not having the, uh, the right equipment. I hope that answered your question, anonymous attendee. <laughs> Thank you so much, um, Isol, for answering that. You guys have any more or less or oh, one more thanks for the answer oh the message thanks for the answer are you referring to the world resources institute report on the food waste there um yeah and the un ep report as well um that references food waste the world resource institute does have um probably some of the best information on it though and um they support a group called champions 12.3 that a lot of um, food businesses and global institutions are par part of and it's focused on sustainable development 12.3 so if you are or if anybody is looking for more information particularly uh, in terms of what countries can do at a national level and also what country or companies can do at a multinational level I know some of the world's largest food companies are part of that um, and there are some case studies available there so that's um, on the champions 12.3 website and they use the world resource institute um, data and support uh, for that group as well thank you i'm going to be reading that report very soon i just googled it real quick <laughs> this is my homework for today um, uh, a lot of anonymous attendees yeah <laughs> a lot of homework a lot of research to do now this is exciting. Thank you so much. Um, anonymous attendee said, brilliant. Thank you. So you did answer it really well. Um, any more question, guys? Last minute before we wrap it up real quick. We are 13 minutes over time, um, but that's not on you. It's our fault because of the, uh, the link. So sorry about that. Thank you guys for sticking around. Um, yeah, please type your last minute questions. And people on the chat are loving you, Isalt. Are you seeing this? <laughs> My compliments to Isalt and their great job. Amazing. Okay, I think we can wrap it up now. We don't have any more questions. Um, oh, do we have time for one more? What do you think? Do we have time for one more? You want to go for one more assault? Yeah, I don't mind. Okay, how to find grants for having adequate warehouse to food bank in terms of more and more food donation that we get from food companies. Actually, I am a local food bank in Medan, North Sumatra, Indonesia, namely Aksata Pangan. So how do we find grants for having adequate warehouse to um, food banks? So I'm not sure specifically in Indonesia, but if you go on to the world um, or the global food banking network, they support food banks across Asia, so they may be able to support. Yeah, I think this is more for, uh, I think, part of PT. Um, I think you may have to find people in uh, Indonesia that can help with this. But uh, would they be able to collaborate with Food Cloud in any way if they're from Indonesia? Um, possibly, I'd say the Global Food Banking Network is probably the best for a start because they specialize in helping start up food banks. All right. Okay, so let's wrap, wrap that up. Um, bring to the side of the event. Many thanks again for today's speaker. Although Rosa is not here, she didn't come back. She didn't want to join the party. No, I'm joking. But uh, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, Isalt, for having us. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to um, highlight that the International Day of Awareness of Food and Lost Waste that will be taking place tomorrow on the 29th of September, more details of which can be found on FAO's technical platform of food loss and waste website. Um, the link will be shared in the, in the uh, chat. So um, do follow Food Cloud on all social platforms, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you have any more questions that you want to ask Isalt, maybe you can drop a uh, food cloud a DM and then I'm sure um, they will fill in with the inquiries. And um, yeah, I guess uh, I hope you guys um, enjoyed today's meeting and brought a deeper understanding towards the twin issues of food loss and food waste security also. 
And I hope it has inspired many of you, especially the young people, the youth to start something similar in your country. I know I wanna do my research on how to start something similar to Food Cloud. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for joining. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I think that's it for now. Oh, thank you. Oh, thanks. Bye, guys.